Test yourself. Take a test. Let me tell you something, my dear friend. Heaven and hell, eternity and death may not be very much a reality to you, but it most certainly is to this preacher. I could care less whether or not your bank account is balanced or you have self-esteem. My only thing, the only thing that might keep me up this evening and steal sleep from my eyes is the fact that many of you will die and go to hell. Test yourself. This is not just some whimsical thing. This is not just something to worry about for a day. We're talking about eternity. Is it well with your soul? If you test yourselves in the light of Scripture, will you be found whole and complete, born again, kept by the power of God? It's time to take a test and stop relying on your emotions and stop relying on what everyone is telling you and stop comparing yourself to other people who call themselves Christians because the great majority of people who call themselves Christians are lost. Some leaders in the Southern Baptist Convention have said this, if we take seriously what the Bible says about Christianity, we would have to say that less than 10 to 15 percent of all our membership is even saved. And don't think that just applies to Southern Baptists. It applies to you all. While you are here and Christ is present, examine yourself. So many times in South America working in the Andes Mountains, I would have to cross footbridges. Gorges that you almost couldn't see to the bottom. Test the ropes. Test the wood. Is this a sound bridge? Examine it carefully. Why? You get out in the middle of that thing, it breaks your dead. In the same way, that salvation that you hold on to, that you trust in, it might be like a horse's hair. When you swing out into eternity, many of you are going to swing out on nothing stronger than a horse's hair. And when the fires of hell blast up, wither and you'll fall examine yourself I hate to tell you that you can go to church every Sunday and go to hell from church I could fix that up and I could be more diplomatic but I've only got a few nights to be with you so I might as well cut to the chase I want you to know that hell runs a bus right past the church and it is full every week picking up people who think that the solution is just coming to church. I am talking about having a living, functioning, vibrant relationship with God that operates in your life on a daily basis where you include Him in every decision, where you drive to work talking to Him, where you go to school talking to Him, where you go in on your break and say, Lord, I can't pass this test without you. I need you to direct my life. I'm talking about having a relationship with God that works. I'm not talking about dancing because you can be dancing and thinking about fornication. I'm not talking about clapping your hand because you can be clapping your hands and winking your eye and shaking your butt. I'm talking about having a vibrant, thirst quenching, mind renewing, devil chasing, gully washing, outpouring of the Holy Ghost, a deluge of power that comes down on you and changes your life. He says, test yourself, examine yourself, not just some light examination, not just hear the words of these, uh, this preacher and walk out there and allow Satan to steal the word of God from your heart. While you're here and while Christ is present and while the word is preached, examine yourself. Sin waits outside this door. It is crouching and its desire is to have you. While you are here and Christ is present, examine yourself. Take the Word of God and what the Word of God says about a true Christian and examine yourself in light of it. And if you fall short of the test, repent and believe. Throw yourself upon the mercy of God. Cry out to Him until a work is done. Now I want to tell you something. And I want to make it very, very clear. Do not listen 
to your heart. Listen to the Word of God. Do not listen to what your daddy says about your salvation. Do not listen to what your mother says about your salvation. Listen to the Word of God. Compare what you know about your secret life. Now, what did I say that for? So many of you young people, you have your parents so deceived, it's unbelievable. Because externally, you conform to their law. But it's not your law. It's not in your heart. And in the secret place, you know who you are. And then some of you who are not children, but adults, you know who you are. If we say that we are Christian, and yet we walk, we lead a style of life, in the darkness, we lead a style of life that contradicts the attributes and the nature of God, what God has told us about Himself. Our style of life reflects nothing of God's character. And our style of life totally contradicts what God has said to be His will. Then we are a liar when we say we're a Christian. We've got to understand this. Do you have ears? You've got to understand it. There are so many people walking around. You can see them. It is like a fog over their head. All these silly little boys out here preaching that if you repeat a prayer, you're going to heaven. And the moment they pronounce that upon a person, it is like a fog comes over them. But it's time to cut through that fog with a deeper, greater light. And that is the Word of God. My dear friend, listen to me. John is saying that if you say you're a Christian and yet your style of life the way you are does not reflect His character. And the things you do go against His will as a style of life. He's telling you, you are a liar when you say you're a Christian. Is your life style marked by a keen interest in God's commandments and a desire to obey them? Goes on, let's go to another test. Verse 6 of chapter 2. The one who says he abides in him ought himself to walk in the same manner as he walked. The Christian ought to walk as Jesus walked. And you say, Brother Paul, you've gone too far now. Who can walk like Jesus walked? Well, let me give you an illustration to try to explain to you what I mean. When I was a little boy, my father was a very big man, very smart man. And like all little boys, I wanted to be just like him. Now up north, we had a, we raised cattle and raised quarter horses. We'd get big snows. And my dad would come into my room at five in the morning, even when I was a little boy, and say, Paul boy, get up. No rest for the wicked. And when he said, get up, you got up. And we would walk out there in the snow. And the one thing I can always remember doing is my father would take these big strides and leave these footprints in the snow. Now, I wanted to walk like my dad walked. And so I would try to stretch my legs out and put my foot in his footprint. And I would stretch my legs out. Now, you can imagine I was stretching out farther than I could ever go. You can imagine I looked ridiculous and you can imagine I fell down. But you will also know by looking at that picture that the greatest desire in my heart was to walk like he walked. You could tell looking at that little boy, he wanted to be like his dad even though sometimes he didn't look anything like him. Let me ask you, what's the greatest desire in your heart? Is your great desire to walk like he walked? To be like He was? Is that your great desire? Are you seeking to put your foot in His footprint? Listen to me, man. Listen to me, woman. While you are here and Christ is present, examine yourself. While you are here and Christ is present, examine yourself. Again, this is the test. This is the exam. If I were to look at your life, if I were to film the whole thing, would I see since the supposed day of your conversion this desire to walk like Him? Or do you desire to walk like everybody else? Do you desire to walk like the world and act like the world and talk like the world and fellowship with the world? Do you identify with the world? Or is it Jesus? 
Is it Jesus? We're not talking about whether or not you need to rededicate your life tonight. We're talking about whether or not you need to get saved. 